This is AIM Agenda. Thanks for being with us this Thursday. And with me now, Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionholm. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Senator. I want to get your thoughts on Tony Windsor returning to politics. It looks like he, he might run for the Senate. You wouldn't be surprised if he joined forces with Nick Xenophon potentially as well, as a, particularly in the context of a double dissolution election. He's got the name recognition to, to give that a shake. Yeah, although uh, I think he wants to run for, North, uh, for uh, New England rather than the Senate. Um, so Xenophon's in the Senate, um, so I'm not sure how that would work t uh, together. But in policy terms, I've got a lot in common. They're both, uh, well, how do I put it, populist. Um, Xenophon votes with the Greens a great deal of the time, and um, uh, Tony Windsor voted with, obviously, the Gillard Labor government and allowed them to pass a lot of legislation in the previous parliament. So, yes, they, they do have a certain commonality. He hasn't announced that he's running for New England. There's still, there's still a chance, apparently, that he, he will put his oh, yeah. hand up for the Senate. And he's going to be announcing it in Canberra. I think Barnaby Joyce made a fair point that if he was going to be running for New England, he, he should have made the announcement in Tamworth, but he's going to be doing it here at Parliament House. Yeah, well, if he runs for the Senate, that will be interesting. Um, a great deal will depend on whether it's a double dissolution or a, a normal half Senate. He would need... Uh, four or five percent of the vote to to get elected in uh, a, a, a double dissolution and about nine or ten percent uh, minimum uh, for a normal half senate so the question is whether is whatever support he has in the new england area as a result of representing that that electorate for so many years would translate into a senate vote it, it would be interesting to see do you, do you think um, now that your name recognition is much greater than what it was at the last election that in a double dissolution context, your chances of re-election are actually not bad. Yes, we're not too concerned about a double dissolution from a personal point of view. Um, I, I think there's a reasonable chance of getting uh, up to the, uh, the level required to get re-elected. Um, although I'm, I, I'm not at all happy with the, electric, uh, with the voting changes, the effect will be that um, parties like ours was before I was elected, before anybody knew about them much, they're never going to have a chance. And a normal Senate half Senate election, um, the threshold will be about 9 or 10 per cent. It's just too high for a small party. They're just never going to win. So we're going to end up with the Senate being permanently log jammed between Labor on, and, on the one side and Greens and Xenophon, if, so long as he stays there, and the Liberals on the other side. And hardly ever will there be um, a majority going either way, and there'll be, it'll be a constant negotiation for everything. Do you, uh, so. If, the, if there isn't a, a double dissolution election, there is a normal half Senate election in September, August, uh, period, you know, that sort of range, August to September, possibly even October. Do, can you see yourself working with the government to, given what they're going to do with these electoral reforms? Uh, are you able to work with them effectively over the next, next few years? Well, uh, my party, Liberal Democrats, is highly principled. So I've said I'll never vote for an increase in taxes or reduction in liberty. So uh, things that fit within our philosophy, small government, low taxes, less regulation, um, I couldn't not support those sorts of uh, bills coming through. But there's been a fair amount of goodwill towards the government on my part um, up, up to now. And my reward has been to change the electoral rules and, with an ambush, I might say, without uh, any forewarning and essentially based, uh, giving me the impression it wasn't going to happen. And then uh, all, so all of a sudden they're going to change the electoral rules so that uh, the chances of my party winning another seat are pretty remote and uh, uh, in a normal half Senate election. And for any other small party to try and win, well, forget it. Uh, that's not democratic, it's not decent. And, but, but for my success at the last election, we would be in that situation ourselves. Doesn't it, though, that the reforms as they're put by the government give a better expression of the voters' will at the ballot box? No, they don't. Um, the, uh, the fact is that the proportion of voters who prefer a minor party in the Senate has been going up the last three elections, and it reached nearly 25 per cent at the last election. Now, the effect of the government's reforms will be that anybody who doesn't vote for one of the major parties, essentially their vote will be exhausted, that it'll be it'll be a waste of their time having voted. Now that's not democracy. Nobody's suggesting the current system that, that allowed for the election of uh, some of the crossbenchers, or at least one, in Ricky Muir, was, is perfect. Nobody's arguing that, that you know, it can't be improved. 
but the government's reforms are not an improvement, they'll make it worse. And well, finally, what's your best guess as to what the, the government will do this year? Do you, do you expect that we will be heading to a July 2 election because of the electoral reform changes making it difficult to, to work with yourself and your, co your colleagues in the uh, crossbench? That's a very good question. Um, and it's not just a matter of the government. It's also a question for the Greens. The Greens are in favour of the electoral reform legislation, but they're not in favour of a double dissolution. The likelihood is they will lose one or two seats if in a double dissolution. The other thing is the government is lining up bills. Well, it's got two bills and it would like to have the third, the ABCC bill, um, available as a, uh, as a trigger so that after the election, assuming the government wins, they can ho uh, call a joint sitting of the two Houses of Parliament and they'll have the numbers to pass through the bills that got blocked. Now the Greens do not want to be a party to passing the ABCC bill. They're not very keen on the registered orgs either. But the ABCC bill is a no-go area for the Greens. Now if they facilitate the government putting that through following a double dissolution, then well, I, I, even supporting the electoral reform legislation, they're being threatened with loss of funding by the unions that give them donations. They would be in absolute desperate territory if it, was, if it could be argued that the Greens helped pass the ABCC bill. So the question is whether the government could okay. actually uh, call a double dissolution without the support of the Greens. Yes, much uh, to, to await and, and see the... Uh, the events of the next couple of weeks as to just how they're going to do it if they do head to an earlier budget, an early mm. election. Mm. Uh, but uh, regardless, well, well, Senator Linehelm, well, thank you. We're out of time, unfortunately. Okay. I appreciate your time. We've got to get to sport now. A lot on the agenda.